Are you tired of filament prints that scream amateur hour? Or having to disassemble your entire assembly to replace one pesky part that split along its layer lines? What about all those times you've had to remove and sand down support material on a resin print that somehow still came out warped? You. Well, if you can wait two weeks for your parts and you're not worried about DHL losing it, then you should try out today's sponsor, JLC. Wait, 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 get that out of here. Just get your own SLS printer. That's right, guys. We have a confirmed launch date for our Micron desktop SLS printer on June 13th, 12 p.m. Central Time. Go check the link in description to our Kickstarter. We'll also be coming to Open Source, so if you want to see it in person, come pay us a visit. Now, you've already seen all the crazy geometries that you can print with SLS. Whether that's these alien-like generative design parts designed specifically to handle a load with just enough material, or complex interlocking mechanisms like this Rubik's Cube we have totally milked dry. But what practical advantages does SLS actually offer on a day-to-day -day basis? For one, if you're an engineer, it means you can draw up whatever shape you need to do the job in CAD without worrying how it's going to be printed. Throw it at the printer and move on to more important things. Like say you're printing an electronic enclosure and you want the front to look a specific way with some raised text and recessed buttons. With SLS, just model it up and get on with life. What if you're a maker who's into miniatures and board games? SLS is a game changer for printing super detailed models without the need for support structures. As you can see here, both the top side and the underside of this part came out pristinely. The details look pretty good, and it doesn't look or feel like it's something that came off a 3D printer. Now, let's talk about something you might not have considered. That is the ease of modifying printed parts when prototyping. We've all been there, right? No matter how skilled you are in CAD, there are always times when you just accidentally modeled a hole too small or made a flange covering a screw head. And if you've ever tried to drill it out, yeah, we know how that goes. You're looking at hours for a reprint just to test again. Here's where SLS steps in with a big advantage. These parts are equally strong in every direction, about 50 megapascals, and they don't have weak layer lines that split. Need to drill a big hole into a thin wall? Done. Need to machine something down? Done. SLS allows you to quickly test your proof of concept models and move on to your next iteration. Of course, with isotropic properties and excellent wear and chemical resistance, you can sleep well at night knowing SLS parts deep within complex assemblies are going to hold up to the task. Now, one very important thing to note is that you are not allowed to go to Big Master, search through their well-organized catalog of hundreds of thousands of standard components, download the 3D model, and 3D print it out. That is directly against their terms of service. Switching gears back to our 3D printer, let's talk about another standout feature of SLS, the repeatability and precision. Thanks to our custom optics system, the positioning of the laser spot is incredibly accurate, well within the diameter of one powder particle. And if things aren't perfect on the first try, it's super easy to dial it in. Take a look at these building blocks that can snap together nicely. Now, full disclaimer, we did bend these parts since some of them are a bit tighter or looser than expected but most of them are in spec. I mean, considering that companies spend millions of dollars on molds to get the notoriously tight tolerances of these snap fit blocks, the fact that we can even get close on this desktop machine, I'd say is pretty good. And that brings us to the next point. After months of design and validation, you finalize your design and are ready to scale up your production. In the past, you would either have to contract out the printing or shell out the big bucks for an injection mold and of course, revalidate the molded parts. With Micron, it's a whole different ballgame. Since you can use the entire build volume to stack hundreds of parts on top of each other in a single print, you can use the same machine you use to prototype for production. And with the repeatability we just talked about, you can expect the first part to come out exactly the same as the 10,000th part. If you have small parts like these pins, you can put them into a center cage so you can media blast them all at once and not lose any of them. When it's time to ramp up production, it's super easy to just add more printers to your farm. Two printers can run off a single wall outlet without any extra equipment. And that's exactly how we managed to produce hundreds of these giveaway models for open source overnight. Of course, manually arranging some of these complex parts can be quite the time sink. As many of you have seen in our previous videos, we've shown off our physics-based nesting algorithm in MicroSlicer. Yes, yes, yes. We've heard you loud and clear. 
we've added orientation and position locking to the models to let you have finer control of the nesting process. For example, these building blocks are best printed at a 45 degree angle. Simply select the models, lock the X and Y axis rotations, and voila, they all pack neatly into the optimal orientation. And with position locking, feel free to build out your favorite racetrack and do donuts around it. Another great thing about SLS is its reliability. The beauty of SLS is that the print process is mostly agnostic to the part geometry. Powder is laid down uniformly and gets fused by the laser in the exact same way no matter what you are printing. There are also no build plate adhesion issues, obviously, or support structures that can fail. Of course, we haven't forgotten about Murphy's Law, so we put more than 40 sensors into the printer that monitor every aspect of the print. This allows the printer to, depending on the severity, warn you about any potential issue, or automatically abort a print on the off chance that something does majorly go wrong. None of that AI smart detection rubbish, just good old handwritten logic and algorithms. There is also triple redundancy in the heater control, with mechanical cutoff and a built-in circuit breaker giving you total peace of mind to run it unattended. Of course, it wouldn't be responsible for us if we didn't talk about safety. In our opinion, while not as straightforward as filament printing, SLS nylon is definitely better to handle than resin. Anyone who's ever run a resin printer knows the awful smell of alcohol and resin filling up the entire room. Not to mention the toxic sticky resin that gets smeared onto everything within a 2 meter radius of the printer. Now, SLS nylon is not perfect. If you sniff a bunch of it, it will be uncomfortable. <laughs> Tight, 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 yeah! However, the powder is non-toxic. The average particle diameter is 50 microns, which means it doesn't stay suspended in the air and can be easily filtered out by the internal HEPA filter of the printer or the detachable dust extractor that can go on the sift bin. For context, many of the most harmful airborne particles we encounter daily are smaller than 2.5 microns. With that being said, we still don't recommend setting it up in your bedroom or right next to your desk. Accidents, like spills of unfused powder, can happen. So it's wise to keep your printer in a space separate from your regular living or working areas as a precaution. Remember, our Kickstarter is going live on June 13th at 12 p.m. Central Time. So mark your calendars so you can snatch those super early bird discounts. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe Join our Discord server, and if you have a question, leave it down in the comments below.